As the post office was nearing completion, the fate of Irish heritage was about to be decided by a national monuments bill introduced into the Irish Parliament, the Doyle. We have a sacred heritage handed down to us. Every single man with a drop of Irish blood in his veins will remember that the time has come to remember the heroism of our race. And it will be sad that the stones that were erected centuries ago and used by Irishmen would now be used for cowhouses and sheds. God forbid that there should be such a sacrilege. The parliamentary debates give a revealing insight into the images of Ireland that moved members of the Doyle to speak. Everybody should be interested in the ancient things of this country, and I believe that every Irishman is. I don't know anything that stimulates more quickly a sense of nationality than a sight of one of these monuments. I have to say that uh, politicians do tend to use these as emblems for Ireland, they still do. Um, in fact, when Ireland was joining the EU in 1973, uh, the speech by the Minister for Foreign Affairs then, Michael uh, Kennedy, um, was to the effect that there was a golden age in, in Ireland uh, and that we were returning to it in some way by rejoining the Europe that we had been disconnected from when we had these ancient places and sacred spaces. The act was framed to protect monuments built before 1700. This immediately safeguarded medieval Christian sites and important Neolithic sites such as Tara and Newgrange. They'd been abandoned and plundered by local authorities and farmers for roads and building materials. Even so, they held a significant place in Irish national consciousness. They were high on the list of uh, images Irish people have of Ireland. I think most school children would have known about Tara and the High Kings. Most children would have known about Newgrange. And the string of uh, history that Newgrange and Tara give to Ireland is a very important one. The excavation of Newgrange began in 1967. The principal archaeologist was Professor Michael O'Kelly from Cork University. Well, the sense of the past that prevailed in the Irish Free State clearly embraced the notion of ancient glory and uh, there is no doubt at all but that in Ireland as elsewhere that archaeology was driven by this uh, desire to vindicate the national past and national greatness by means of archaeology. Today, Newgrange is one of the most popular historic attractions in Ireland. And what tourists see and learn about the site is the result of O'Kelly's work. He discovered that the tomb was much older than had previously been thought, even older than the pyramids. Now, Newgrange was constructed in 3200 BC. It's 5,200 years old, and our date comes from radiocarbon dating, an organic product found on the site. O'Kelly also discovered that at dawn during the winter solstice, a shaft of sunlight enters the chamber through an opening above the doorway. This makes Newgrange the oldest known astronomically aligned structure in the world. When we look at Newgrange, this great white wall, this outer facade, it's the most visually striking part of the monument. It's visible for miles on end. Now this wall is a reconstruction. And as it's a reconstruction, it's also an interpretation and quite a controversial interpretation at that. Now, many archeologists believe that this wall did not exist in 3200 BC. That the quartz, which you get the white material and the granite boulders between the quartz made a ceremonial footpath around the perimeter of the site. But Professor Michael J. O'Kelly believed that this wall existed at that time. Because when the cairn collapsed, all this material fell into the ground, as I said, as far as we are standing. And that suggested that it stood upright at a point. Working with an engineer, O'Kelly tried to recapture what the approach to Newgrange must have looked like. From the distribution of stones from the collapsed cairn, they deduced that the surface had been almost vertical. This reconstruction was controversial at the time because the evidence was conjectural. 
It's controversial today because instead of stabilizing the existing remains, a whole new structure was erected, characteristic of restoration projects in Britain and Ireland during the 1960s. The reconstruction was the best, I would say, Kelly could have done from what was found, and uh, taking the engineering into account and where the material was found. But it has been said, not by me since, that the reconstruction of the facade is very much in harmony with the fronts of various houses built during the 1960s with their stone frontings. <laughs>